Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to the 106th and final fly tying video of 2023. And I just want to say thank you for all you who've watched this year, all your support, all the friends I've made on this channel. I couldn't ask for a better group of folks, and I am really looking forward to continuing in 2024. So for today's pattern, and how did I decide on this one to tie? Well, it's pretty simple, really. I just haven't tied a dry fly in a while. So I went on my bookshelf, pulled out a dry fly book, and I found a cool one in Paul Jorgensen's Dry Fly Patterns for the New Millennium, which was published in 2002, so it's not really a new book. But I did find a cool pattern called the Delaware Adams. Sometimes you'll see it called the Delaware River Adams. So obviously it's pretty similar to the regular Adams, but two main differences. It's got a different color body and then a Palmer Grizzly hackle up through the body. Now this is not at all an unknown fly. It's in several books out there. There are even a few videos of it out there. It was created by the legendary Catskill tire Walt Deddy. Don't really know what year, but we can probably assume sometime in the 1940s or 50s. And one note worth pointing out, in Jorgensen's book, which who, by the way, was also another legendary Catskill tire, he had the body as a light olive, almost a yellow color, but Mike Valla had it in his Catskill book as a much darker olive, almost a true green body. So I'd say any shade of olive is probably gonna be fine for this one. Now, one more question I wanna pose to you guys. Is this thing still a mayfly with the palmered body? Now, I'm gonna say it depends on how thick you palmer it. The one you're about to see me tie, I put it on there pretty thick, so mine is leaning a little bit more toward a general attractor fly, maybe something you could use in some really fast, riffled, choppy water. But either way you tie this thing, it's still a pretty cool bug. So there it is in the vise, my first attempt at the Delaware Adams from Paul Jorgensen's Dry Fly Patterns for the new millennium. Now I'm tying this on a size 12. This is one of these new Tagata hooks I picked up from Moonlit Fly Fishing. It's a size 12, standard length, barbless. Pretty neat hooks. I haven't tied with them yet, but you know I'm, I'm liking the looks of them. So I'm gonna go with some gray thread on this one. This is a 70 denier. Let's lay a base down to the start of the bend. And the tail, just some brown hackle barbs. Maybe a body length here. I don't know how many this is, at least a dozen or so. Let's go ahead and catch this in, try to keep them on top. Okay, I think that's fine. I'll bury these stubs right here and then take my thread on up at least a couple eye lengths back. And we're gonna catch in some grizzly hackle tips for an upright wing. So I've got these right here. This is probably gonna be a little long, but we'll see. We'll do a couple of, of wraps right here and flip them up. I want them to be a little bit taller than the, the hackle. I think that's gonna be fine right there. So a few extra wraps going back. We need to snip the, the stems back here. And take your thread right to the front where you caught it in. Let's fold these up. Now I'm gonna have some, some of those little fibers right there sticking forward, which I don't really want, but you know, we can probably trim them before we go any farther, if you want to. Probably don't necessarily need to. Now we're not tying these spent, but we do want them, oh, about 30 degrees separation or so. So I'm gonna put a couple of X wraps, figure eight wraps right through them. And you can always use the collar hackle that we're gonna be tying in the last step to help position these. And you might actually need to because, you know, they will get jostled around a little bit before we're done. But we've got enough wraps in there to pretty much keep them separated. But I am gonna go in here and just try to snip these fibers going forward. It might make our head a little bit easier to deal with in the last step. Okay, that's clean enough. We'll just move on. Now let's take our thread to the back of the tail, and we are gonna rib this with a, another hackle. So we're gonna palmer a hackle up front, and this one's gonna be a grizzly. Now it's gonna be smaller than our, our front hackle. You don't really want it to be much you know, longer, I would say, than the, the hook point. Because if these barbs are too long, it's, you know, it could impact your, your hookup rate. It might not make a big difference, but 
you never know. You just don't want them too long and potentially closing that up. So I've got this stem right here to contend with. Let's snip this guy. Okay, now let's keep our thread in the back and put some wax on it so we can dub the body. Now the pattern in Jorgensen's book calls for an olive, but it looked a little bit more yellow. So this is actually a yellow olive, a PMD color. And we're not gonna put a whole lot of dubbing on here, just enough to, to get us up there behind those wings and give the body a little hint of this yellowish olive color. And what you might wanna do is try to get one wrap behind this Palmer tackle just so you're, you're not starting it right back there on top of the tail. Okay, I think we've got that far enough. It might be getting a little bit close to, the, to these wings right here, but I think we're gonna be fine. The, in the, one of the last steps, the normal collar hackle, we're gonna try to get one or two wraps behind the, the wings and then one or two in front of it. I think the one I had in the vise at the beginning was just a little too heavily hackled. I mean, it's still a fishable fly, but you know, that thing is gonna be a super high floater and you might not want them to be that high of a floater. So I think we got the, the Palmer hackle just fine right there. Let's snip off this excess. Now the front hackle, just like an Adams, we've got a brown and a grizzly here. I'm gonna catch them both in at the same time. And you can try to lay these together you know maybe with the concave sides together before you catch it in and that might help them um, you know stay firmer more firm uh, i've heard that people say that um, but you know in practical experience i haven't necessarily experienced that but i did try so i've got these two you know, rooster hackle feathers here. Um, concave sides together. And let's do two wraps behind it and then see if we can get some, have enough room for two in front. Getting a little bit close to my eye right there. Let's see, can I get one more? Maybe I should just do one more with the brown instead of with both of them. So let's try that. Okay. All right, I think that is gonna be enough hackle right there and I might still be crowding my eye a little bit. We're gonna see if we can finish this off and with a fishable fly, so. All right, we'll know in just a minute. I'm gonna snip off these two stems right here. Okay. My wings are, they're doing okay. They're still split about 30, 40 degrees, but here's the challenging part. I'm gonna lick my fingers, try to pull all this back and just see if I can make enough space right here for a whip finish and keep these barbs out of the eye. Okay, I think we have it's gonna be a little tricky to get our whip finish in here without trapping any of these fibers going forward. So what you have to do here, just sometimes zigzag it through a little bit. And I think I've trapped a couple, but we'll be able to snip those or singe them off and we'll be just fine. So there we go. Maybe prop these wings up a little bit, do a little cleanup right here. Or don't worry about it, just put a drop of head cement on it, call this thing done. I've got one fiber right there I probably need to take care of. But that's it, the Delaware Adams. I think it's a pretty nifty little pattern. You know this thing's gonna be a high floater, and you know this thing's gonna be a, a good spring and summertime fly. So I appreciate you watching, everybody. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.